Do you clean your seizure with alcohol too? What's that? Do you clean your a seizure with no. alcohol? No. Mm -mm. Nope. I, sp I spray them with um, a little bit of barbicide every once in a while. I keep it in a little spray bottle and I wipe it and re-oil them. I don't think, I, I really don't believe, um, other than blades, I don't believe we collect a lot of bacteria and stuff on our equipment. It's all stainless steel. Um, and I don't, I don't believe in cleaning everything every single time. I know I'm probably gonna get blasted for that if we put this on YouTube, but I don't care. Dogs lick their butts, <laughs> okay? They lick other dogs' butts, and we're worried about, you know, sure. whether we're mm -hmm. using this scissor that we used on clean hair on the next dog or not. That's just silly. Yes, if I have a dog that has a skin problem, yeah. As soon as I'm done with that blade, it gets set aside, you know, and it gets cleaned before I touch it again. Um, and it doesn't, it doesn't touch any other dogs or anything like that. But on a healthy dog that's been bathed, that's just ridiculous. And what is this you're using right here? Uh, just hairspray okay. made for dogs. And then this is like a, basically a boost texture spray. It's almost like a dry shampoo. Mm -hmm. Just makes it stand up. I Those are- you used a dry shampoo instead of that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, any of the dry shampoos. Um, the only things I try to stay, um, I try to do, like there's some of them that have like less of a smell yeah. because I feel like anything with strong smells bothers me and they smell, what, 50 times better than we do. So I try not to put like strong, especially around their head and stuff. I don't want, I don't want anything with a really strong smell to it. Yeah. So these aren't exactly my favorites. I'm actually probably not gonna buy them again, but they work, so I'm trying to use them up. So a texture spray and then a hairspray is the maximum that I will do on most pet people's dogs. For certification, you can do chalk first and then you can add other stuff because you're in charge of that dog and you can take it and wash it afterwards before you send it home yeah. or take it home to yourself, whatever. But I don't like to send pet dogs home with a lot of product in them unless the owners know what they're doing and they've asked for it and I've explained to them what they have to do. Yeah. At minimum, what they have to do is what we do with our show poodles after they've been sprayed up and shown. We actually hose them, we call it hosing them, we spray them down that whole area that's had hairspray in it with some type of a conditioning spray, usually the Crown Royal like I use. Um, but what that does is it takes all the hairspray out and then we actually reband it before and we can leave them like that until the next show or the next day or whatever, but you've got to get that product out of the hair or it causes more matting. Um, and I've, you know, I've, I've had a couple of big people in the industry say, I've never seen a terrier matted. <laughs> really? How long have you been grooming? Yeah. Uh, unless they ask you to, don't shave this, okay? Because that's another part of what that looks like is le at minimum don't shave here because yeah. this is part of what goes into the visor over the head uh, over the eyes and it goes with also the expression of what you're looking for so if they insist then you can you know i trim it out with thinning shears if it's a regular client um, but if they insist then only shave right here don't take this out because that's all you know you'll you'll look at the dog like, why doesn't it look right it's literally as simple as you shaved here and you shaved the bridge of the nose and now it doesn't look right because the eyes are way too open. Yeah, then you look like a Bichon, you know, so you don't want that. So generally what I do is I, I use my thinning shears on stuff like that because it leaves a more natural look but I can still clear out in front of their eyes. Um, you know what, Larry, why don't you go ahead and move that camera right, right there in front of where Drea's working and see, cause I'm going to pull the, I want to pull their head around where everybody can see. And maybe that'll help. And if you want to come up and stand behind me, if I'm in your way, cause you want to see, Hey, come on in. Um, you can come stand behind me if you want to. Everybody, this is Marlene. Hi. All right, so I'm just going to take my thinning shears a little bit right in front of the eye here. Hey, stop. Don't be a fart. Thank you. 
because this is a pet dog and they're going to complain if we leave too much of it. She says, I don't care, you must have something else. All right, so pet dog we cleared in front of the eyes. If you were showing this dog, you would leave more kind of sticking up. You still want them to see, but you don't want anything, you know, you don't want to obscure their vision, but they've already shaved a lot of that off. You can see how short it is at the, at the very front of the nose here. Somebody actually did that, so I can't fix that today. But you want like a little fan right in front of their eyes, if that makes sense. Yeah. Hey, where are you going? I'm not done with you. Come back here. Yoo -hoo. Larry's not going to save you. I know my dogs all think he's going to save them too. Come back. Okay. Um, you can also, I mean, this dog's got really, really thick coat, so it's not necessary, but you can also use a little flea comb or a teasing comb and, and tease it and make it stand up. Um, that's helpful too, if you need it. Um, but really the main thing today is we're just going to try to take off these mutton chops. It's not going to be exactly correct, but you guys can get the idea. And most of your pet people would be like super happy with this trim because it looks like a Westie, but it's not like, you know, the giant head. So these are the curved chunkers and they like leave a nice texture. Um, and again, I'm really not gonna do anything to the top of his head because you don't want it to be an exact perfect line. You want it to be a little messy like that because that's just their, that's their personality. <laughs> and really, I mean, it's not, you're not taking off a whole lot. It's just the shape and the fact that you're not leaving it. You know, when I was taught, we didn't touch that. And it was like this long and it just kind of, you know, just kind of laid down like, that doesn't look right. Why am I doing that? That doesn't look right. So at this point, this is pretty much as, 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 as good as we're gonna get because of the shape that we already have. But you guys can have the idea that this would be, the side of the face would be more even with the outside of the ear here, but it's round, if that makes any sense. Yeah? Okay. And then just like with the Bichon, don't try to get your round from underneath. Trim this straight flat right across. And then come up around from the bottom. Okay? Now, uh, Wendy Booth is um, one of the certifiers and one of the best people in, in National Dog Groomers Association that you could talk to. She's wonderful. Um, she's from Colorado and she actually used to raise and show these guys. So if you ever have any questions, you can always talk to her too. She's awesome. She, yeah, she always calls back. She's just, she is, she's the one that does the announcements. When you hear talking all the time, that's Wendy. And she's, she's super sweet and she's always, always, always willing to help a new groomer or somebody that just needs help. She's just one of those, she's just one of those wonderful people that is, you know, happy to help pretty much everybody. So um, we're just gonna blend down the side here into the shoulder layback. Cause all we really want is a little bit longer on the back of the neck. This short line into the longer line with your thinning shears. You want it to look natural. Boom, 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 just like that. Blend it all in. Okay, so you don't see a line there. All you know is that dog looks a little bit shorter in the body. <clears throat> and then what's something that I always say, who, who comes here all the time? What's something I always say about the short-legged terrier's feet? They should be up on their toes. Mm-hmm, what else? What's different between the front feet and the back feet? Yes, why? Yeah. 
Well, and again, on a pet dog, you know, if you send it home like that and they're like, you don't have to feed too long, fine, whatever. But just so you know, if you're going to certify with it, even if you better make it look like the front feet are bigger than the back feet. Because if you know that stuff, and even if you mess up on your scissoring, but you know all those things, you know the technical stuff about the breed, you're going to get a better uh, grade or you're going to get a better placement, you know, whatever you're doing. So um, certification, you would round.